How's it going, everybody? Hope you're all doing all right. So today we're going to be continuing on some progress for the math animation editor. So this is where I've got it right now. I did work on it a little bit in my spare time. Uh, a few things that have changed. One of them is the inspector window over here. You can now like actually collapse different groups, which is kind of nice. So we've got like transform stuff grouped together, SVG properties grouped together. Uh, kind of nice. I'm still not quite sure how I like it. I think it's better. Uh, and we're already running into an error. Let's see what we hit here because I have no idea why that's broken. Size of color stack is greater than or equal to zero. Uh, push style color pop mismatch. Okay. So that's interesting. Um, and this is happening here. So let's just check this out real quickly. So we have a push here. Just want to make sure nothing's broken. <laughs> Shouldn't have been broken, but I guess it is. Uh, and you can see we need some more work here. So clearly uh, things aren't working correctly. So um, yeah, that's kind of weird. We have push and then we have pop. And nothing else pushes colors in here, I don't think. Yeah. Interesting. So, as I was saying before, I've changed up the inspectors. Let's see if we get the same bug. Okay, we did get the same bug. So, this makes me think it's actually happening. Let's see. So, if I retry it, saying it's happening in end list box. Oh, I wonder if I, okay. I think I know what it is. So we're doing this before we begin the list box and we're doing the pop after we end it, which it's not happy about. I guess we can uh, put that there. See if that makes it happy. It's weird, I didn't run into this before and now all of a sudden I am GUI is deciding to freak out about this, which is interesting. Okay, trap, one more time. So we do that, <laughs> it's the same thing. Well, this isn't a great start to a stream. Okay, let's see if we can figure out what's going on here real quickly first before I continue. Okay, so if I do this, this is fine, it's happy. It's when I have them both selected that it's not happy. So, let's try and see what the heck is going on here. So that's the animation group stuff. We have this collapsing header stuff. And let's just go up here. So basically what I did was I added all those groups and everything and I was not running into this problem before. Uh, but now the animation inspector and the animation object inspector are both on the same panel, which I thought would be nicer, but not sure now. Wait, okay, so we've got two pop style things. I don't think this is it though. Yeah, this is uh, very strange. Let's see if we remove it, if it just fixes it. So if we do remove that and remove that, let's see if we still get that bug. Still very strange. I have no idea why it's getting mad about that all of a sudden. So click that. <laughs> it's still getting mad. This is, uh, yeah, not sure what's going on here. Okay. Gonna try one more thing just to try and see where the heck this is going wrong. So we're gonna put a breakpoint here and see if we can find where that exception occurs. So click here, click here. And then we just, it, it gets mad. Interesting. And if we look at the message, it says, oh wait, G dot group stack size greater than zero. That's a different message. Okay, <laughs> that's why. So we were looking at the wrong thing. Group stack size is greater than zero. So I'm wondering where that's coming from now. Hmm. 
So we have all this. I think that's fine. Yeah, I have no idea why this is getting upset. When it wasn't before, too, especially. Well, this isn't supposed to be the subject of today's stream, but I feel like this should get fixed since uh, it's a pretty basic functionality that shouldn't be crashing like that. Uh, let's see if we can narrow it down a little bit more. And then once we debug this, we'll go... and see if we can implement some of the other stuff. Okay, now it's working. Okay, here we go. We didn't hit the breakpoints, so that's interesting. Ah, okay, I wonder if it's this. Oh, okay, I am an idiot. So, <laughs> turns out that, that should be in there. Yeah, so uh, let's just <laughs> re-enable all this stuff again. Um, you should only end the list box if you've actually started it. So it's one of the downfalls of I am GUI is it's not easy to see stuff like that, unfortunately. So if we do this again, okay, if we jump in here, okay, nothing is going wrong now. And it all seems to work. Okay, cool. So <laughs> what I was trying to show is, I don't know if I quite like this, so if I click off here, you'll see this is the animation inspector, which is because this animation is selected. If I click off, it disappears. The thing that's kind of annoying and that I'm not quite sure I like, uh, I, I don't like this, first of all. This is all gonna change. I just don't know what to yet. But say I'm adding a new animation object here that I want to fade out. Um, I'm just gonna add one of these. This is the problem, right? As soon as I click over here to add it, we now have an active object, and so all of this stuff pops open and then you have to close it, and then you can drag something over. So. It's just kind of annoying. I don't really like the behavior. Not sure what the best behavior will be for this though. So that's to be decided. That's one of the things that I've added though. The other thing that I've added is layout stuff. So we can load different layouts. If I go and load a uh, default, I think I'm in default too. If I load default, yeah. You'll notice we kind of get a different layout. It just reloads on the fly. It takes a second because I'm doing it in a very stupid way, but it was the easiest thing to just kind of hack in there. So, you know, it is what it is. Can load the debug layout, which just kind of shows me all the debug metrics and stuff. And then uh, for some reason we have lowercase default and uppercase default, which isn't quite right. So uh, another nice thing that you can do too is like, say you change the layout to something different. Like, uh, I don't know, maybe you move this over here and you move like this stuff in with here, right? So this is like your layout that you wanna save. Then you can go ahead and say like file, save layout. And we'll call this uh, my custom layout. We'll save it. And so now if we go view layout, we see we have our custom layout here. So then if I go back to default, this is the default layout and then we can go and load the one I just created, which is this one. So there's no way to delete them right now. Um, you can just go and delete the file which is located in here with the rest of the of your uh, global app data stuff. So you can go in here and do that and just kind of delete it manually. It's not going to realize that. So like it'll still show up here and then that's just going to crash. Well, it's not going to crash, but it's just not going to do anything. So like it prints an error and then just does nothing, <laughs> which is good. I mean, that means the user won't actually encounter an error, but it's bad because it doesn't tell you what's wrong. Uh, but we can fix all that later and stuff. Um, anyways, though, if we close this and then we reopen it, it will show like that'll disappear now because it's going to see that that file doesn't exist. So you can see we don't have it in there anymore. I'm going to load this layout because I kind of like this one for streaming. So that's kind of the stuff we've added. Uh, one last thing about the layouts. If I try and save, for instance, uh, default to, which is a reserved file name, right? This is one of the ones that's going to be shipped with the app itself. Then when you try to save, it just says failed to save. The name default to is reserved. So that just makes sure that you don't like dump your data over whatever default things. Another thing that I've added since the last time I've streamed. Uh, now when you open a fresh project, it does. So the whole reason I added that layout stuff is because before when you open a new project, it would load all the panels and the viewports and stuff in very weird. They didn't look very good and it just didn't load them incorrectly. 
And so we fix that. I'll show that in just a second. First, let's commit that bug that we fixed. Um, I'm gonna go check out B hotfix. Okay, and then we're gonna say add that. And we're gonna say uh, fix bug. What was the bug? It was where uh, pop push mismatch for begin list box. Okay, and let me just make sure that's correct. And then we'll go back to the other branch and continue. Just wanna make sure that's pushed because that's a kind of a dumb bug that shouldn't be in the master branch, but I pushed too early and I don't have test. So, okay, so we've got that. That's fine. And why is that different? Okay, it doesn't really matter. It's just a space. So I'm gonna go ahead and merge this Confirm that. Okay, no dumb bugs now. Cool, so we can move on. And then I'm gonna go ahead and just check out master, pull from master, and then we're gonna check out gizmo upgrade. Okay, cool. So, fresh slate. Now, I was talking about starting a fresh project, right? Say you're starting completely fresh, um, you don't have any projects or whatever, yeah, so let's let's go and do that, right? Actually, we have to be in release mode to do that. So we'll do that in just a second. Uh, one of the optimizations I have is if you're in debug, it'll automatically load the last project that you had open. Whereas in release mode, we actually get our project splash screen so that we can go and create new projects or open one. Um, I don't know, I might add that as a feature to the main application because you probably don't want this to pop up every time, but it is nice. So. Let's say we're creating a new test project, uh, 55 or 23. So we're creating this test project, we open it up, and what happens is you'll notice it switched the layout, which is a good thing. It's gonna load the default layout every time you start a new project and then you can go and switch it or like do your own. Um, uh, and I see that it's actually copied a few different ones over there that I don't want. Well, I'll clean that stuff up later. So. Long story short though, we get this test scene, right? So we're basically opened up into a new scene and everything. You got a camera, you have the hello world text showing up and stuff. So basically it's hopefully a lot nicer for somebody who's new to it. Like, cause you have the track, you can kind of see the stuff here. You don't have to figure out how to add a track and a camera and all that stuff. Um, likewise, when you create a new scene, so like, let's say we change the scene. We just change the text here to like um, random text. All right, and then we'll just scale it down a little bit. 1.5, sounds about good. Okay, so, right, we've kind of changed the scene up a little bit more. If we go and we create a new scene, you'll see it defaults to this, the same thing that we had. So this is kind of like the default template. I'll probably add a way so that you can create your own template here too, but for now that doesn't matter. And if we go back to the old scene, you can see it just loads what we had there. So. It's nice when you create a new scene, you don't have to go and like create uh, the track, which is this part, create like some create animations and then add in a camera and stuff. That stuff all just gets auto added automatically now, which is pretty nice. So uh, those were just some optimization things that I tried to fix up, make it a little bit nicer for opening new projects and stuff like that. So we'll go ahead and delete those projects because I don't need them. I do still need to add a way to delete projects within this uh, project splash screen thing. Uh, we'll get around to that eventually. Anyways, so we've got this. I'm just gonna switch to default to. Yes, I think I like this better. Okay. So we've got this scene and what do we wanna fix? We want to fix more hotkeys and uh, something else in here, which I don't have, but I guess we can add here. Also fix gizmos. <laughs> so the gizmos have some problems. I don't think I have an issue for this, which is why I'm just gonna kind of shoehorn it in here. Uh, at least I don't think they do. Yeah, we have this one, but that's a different bug. Okay, so yeah, basically the gizmos have some problems. Uh, so say for instance, I click on this, right? If I click this gizmo, You'll notice the object is moving really weird. It's not sticking to where the gizmo points. This is actually correct. So 
what happened is I clicked this and you can see over here we have the generated child selected. So this is positioned relative to its parent, which is this guy. So this is the parent position. If we move this, you can see it moves normally. What we're doing here is we're moving the local position, which you can kind of see up here. And so moving the local position changes it because the parent is scaled four and a half times. And so that means that every move we do here is like has a four and a half X increase thing. Anyways, it's not good. It shouldn't be doing that. And we can fix that pretty easily. So instead, like what we'll do is we can just simply, instead of having this track the local position, we'll have this track the global position of the object and it should update everything accordingly. So let's go into gizmos.cpp and let's actually fix that. And I'm gonna close all the other tabs. If we scroll down, okay. So we've got the camera, we've got this stuff. Let's see. Okay, here we go. So we're gonna go into on gizmo. We get the active animation object, okay. And then we call on gizmo here. And so if we check this guy out, here we go. So this is where it happens. Um, render and handle 2D gizmo logic based on edit mode. So this is some stuff that we've got to fix too, or just add eventually. But for now, okay, yeah. So what you can see is we're using the global position start here. And this is definitely not the thing we want to be using. So instead what I'm gonna do is just use the global position. Actually, no, that actually probably is the thing we want to use. So this gets the global position of the object. If we take a look at what our objects look like, you can go in here and kind of see all the properties. There's a lot of stuff in here. We have a position, that's local position. Then we have position start, that's kind of something used for state stuff, it's not great. And then we have global position start, which is the thing we actually want. So that's actually probably good. The thing that's wrong is we do this, then we get the local position. Yeah, so this is the part that's definitely wrong. So <laughs> local position equals this global. Yeah, I have no idea what I was doing here. So this is the part that's obviously wrong. Uh, so we will fix this stuff, I guess. And actually, I don't know if this is right either because it's not rendering in the correct location, which is interesting. Um, Let's see what happens if we just make this global position real quickly. I am curious, so we'll check that out. Joe Mega, hey, how's it going? Mic arm is still broken, yes. Uh, I could fix it at some point, just not today, I guess for some reason, because don't feel like it, but. <clears throat> okay, so this can't be the global position of the object because if it was the actual global position of the object, it would be staying centered to where the object is. So first of all, let's see if we can figure out why that's not quite correct. And I think we have a, okay, here we go. So this is probably what's wrong. So this is where we apply global transforms to all the objects and this happens on updates and lots of different things. So basically what we do is we update the parent and then we update the child and we kind of propagate changes down. So we do global transform equals that times that. Okay, this is where it's wrong. Global position plus equals that. Not sure why I'm even doing it this way. Um, we should probably be saying next obj global position. Well, actually, where's this set initially? Because that's what I'm curious about now, too. Okay, so we set this to the position start. Then we set that to the object's position. Okay, and then we set the transform to translation times rotation times scale. And now I'm curious too. So we do that. Then we do this. Oh, okay. Then we multiply the parent's transformation by the child's transformation, which gets the appropriate one. Okay, okay. 
So then what I probably want to do is I want to just say, instead of doing this, which is kind of dumb, we can literally just say next OBJ global position, which this should be the global position start, I think. <laughs> we'll have to do some math stuff to check on this later. Okay. I think if we do, there should be like uh, actually GLM should have something for us if we can get IntelliSense to work. No, GLM. Okay, here we go. Um, I can't remember what it's called, but there is a function that basically gets the stuff out of a matrix. Is it unpack matrix? Nope. Man, my key combos are all messed up because I've been using a Mac for work lately and I cannot remember that Windows, it's control shift to do like fast key bounces, whereas Mac, it's command shift. And so it's throwing me off. Uh, anyways, GLM, let's see. Get position from transformation matrix. They have a function and I just can't remember. Decompose. That's what it is. Okay. So we'll do like GLM uh, vec for position scale. Uh, and I think it's quant for rotation. We'll see. I could be wrong. So we'll say uh, GLM decompose, give it the matrix, which is that scale orientation translation. And I guess we need to give it a uh, skew and something else. Skew and perspective which we don't really care about, but I'll take those out anyways. Okay, and then what's wrong with this? Mat4, Vec4, Quat, Vec4, Vec4, Vec4. Oh, should these be Vec3s? These should be Vec3s. Okay, and I think actually rotation should also be Vec3, okay. Well, that just makes it easier. Nope, still not happy. <laughs> Let's see. So this takes a mat for VEC3. Okay, quaternion. VEC3, VEC3. Oh, and then perspective, it was VEC4. That was what I had wrong. So then uh, GLM VEC4 perspective. And still not happy. This is Matt four. And then Vec three. Then Quaternion. Then Vec three. Okay, then Vec three, Vec four. Yeah. I have no idea why it's not happy. Why is that state? It's still, oh, because I didn't actually delete it there. Okay, <laughs> there we go. Anyways, now that that's done, we can say next OBJ global position equals position. Uh, and I have to actually kind of do this because I have different types, which hopefully I'll reconcile at some point. Okay, we'll try this in a second. Uh, Joe Mega found out something fun as I'm currently working on PC via Parsec. So I don't have it where I'm currently at and it sends controllers as Xbox 360 controller, which sadly seem to have their triggers on a single axis. So no way to know if both are pressed or none. Interesting. <laughs> Doesn't sound like fun. Okay, let's see if we've got... Okay, Gizmo is definitely not in the right place now. Uh, 
Okay, let's get this back into location. So yeah, that's definitely not in the right place. So I'm wondering if it's this or if it's just rendering it in the wrong place. Um, let's see. Oh, I changed this as well. So we should probably change that to that. Yeah, let's try this again. Okay, third time is a charm, maybe fourth time, I don't know. We'll get there eventually. Okay. Well, <laughs> it's in the right place, so that's good. Uh, it just doesn't move it to the right place. So that's the thing we have to fix now. So when we translate the gizmo, we need to say, so we update that, then we say local position Okay, well, that's wrong. That's definitely not the right local position. Yeah, okay, I have no idea what I was doing here. So, um, <laughs> why am I updating the local position in the first place? Let's, let's examine how this thing works so that I can hopefully figure out what's going on. So basically what we do is we loop through each object and recursively update the transforms by appending children to a queue. Okay, so we go through we push the object. Okay, so this is the object that we're updating. We go through each of its children. Okay, we say update. So we update the parent object first. That sets its global position start to whatever the position start is. Since it's the parent, I think that makes sense. I actually don't know if we even want to do this really, like if this even matters. I'm going to do that and say it doesn't matter. So we do this. We multiply. Okay, so we use our local rotation, our local scale, and our global position. Ah. Uh, We should just use our position. Okay. So we use local stuff. We get our global transform by using local stuff. So this is technically still local. Then what we do is we say if it has a parent and the parent exists, what we do is we multiply the parent's global transform by ours. And now this is truly global. So at this point, if it's truly global, what we do is we decompose it to figure out what the global transposition start should be. And I'm guessing we're just going to do this equals uh, whatever this was. So I think that's what we actually want to do. And now that I'm thinking about this too, it doesn't really make sense to have that global position start, right? Because if we're going into here, we're using the object's position to kind of figure this stuff out. So unless I added another matrix, which is like global transform start, this is kind of the only thing we have, which I guess could be a problem. Trying to think if that's a problem. There's a lot of stuff I have to fix with the way uh, transformation updates work because they're just not good at all right now. So I, I think this is what I'm going to do. I think this is the easiest thing. We're just going to add like a GLM mat four global transform start. Okay. And inside of here, we're basically going to do the same thing here except this will be dot rotation start. So we'll just use the starting things of everything. Okay. Uh, and this one, we're just going to do this. I should probably abstract all this stuff out into a function too, but we're just going to experiment, see if we can get something working first. Uh, we'll do that. So we've got that, that's rotation start. We do that scale start. Okay, and then this will be position start. 
Okay. So that's all good. And then this will be global transform start. All right. So we'll do that. And then wherever we were doing this stuff, we will say next obj that equals global transform start times start. Okay. So we've got all that stuff now. Oh, that's wrong. Global transform start. Okay. So we've got all that now. And then we're going to essentially do the same thing here too. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that. Uh, and that. And we'll just copy paste. And we're going to have to eventually deduplicate this stuff. Okay, so that's going to be that, and that's going to be transform start. Okay, and we're going to put to do deduplicate this stuff. Okay, so we've got all that. I want to do one more thing, which is look through and see where we use this because I may have to change a few other initialization stuff just to make sure we get the correct results. So. Yep, so where we do this, I'm just going to add that so that we get that initialized as well. And I think that's probably it. We'll just double check. Okay, so that's the stuff we were just doing, which is fine. Yeah, okay, cool. So I think that's about it. Sweet, so we've got that. That's how we get our global position start now and we get our global position depending on those. Now, when we move it with the gizmo, which was somewhere in here, on gizmo, other on gizmo. Okay, here we go. So we basically say, let's move the global position start here. Then we do that, we reassign it, we say, okay, this now equals whatever this was. Uh, let's not do any weird stuff with the local position because I have no idea what I was even doing here anyways. Because the local position isn't even used, I don't think. Yeah, way, okay, the local position is used. Uh, it's used to initialize it. Okay. So that's why I was doing local position stuff. So how do we... I'm trying to think, how do we get the local position based on the delta here? Or does it even matter? Hmm. Let's see what happens when we just uh, comment this stuff out. I don't think anything's going to happen, but let's see. I think it's just going to break it. We'll try afterwards, see what happens. And Joe Omega, well, it's also because I'm making a generic input device API that can rely on HID, so that implementation puts them on a single axis. Okay. Just waiting for it to compile now. All right, so we click here. Uh, something's wrong. This isn't right, so we already know something's wrong. And when I move this, it doesn't actually do anything, which is kind of what I expected. Um, also interesting is it kind of jumps down. Yeah, we get that. We get that everywhere. So that's another gizmo thing. Uh, the horizontal works fine, but vertical stuff seems to be kind of weird. Nope, horizontal is not good either. <clears throat> that might be all right too. I don't know. Because as long as it stays, as long as the object stays like at the same position, it should be fine. So we just need to fix this stuff though. So how do we get the local position? 
I guess we can just add, I'm, I'm, I think I'm being stupid here too. We can just add the delta, can't we? Vec3 delta equals this global position start minus global position start, right? We can just do that, delta, and then we can say, this position start plus equals delta. Yeah, and I, I think that's it. I think I was making this way harder than it needed to be. So we click that. Nope, that's that's definitely not right. We've got not a number everywhere. So let's fix that. Okay, we've got that fixed again. It starts jumping up here very quickly. So I don't think we want to add the entire delta or something. So we copy this, then we modify it, right? This is if it got moved. Let's see what that delta is. G logger uh, delta percent 2.3F. So let's actually kind of log this. Because now I'm curious. Okay, try this again. We'll eventually get there. So I'm going to we'll, we'll do this. Put that there. Click there. And now I click here. Okay, so the delta just keeps getting bigger. which is interesting. What was the first one we got though? The first one we got seems reasonable. 0 0.082, 0 0.480. And then it keeps getting bigger by about five times. Five or six times. So it keeps growing like 6x, which is just really weird. Oh, five or six X. You know what it is, and I think I know exactly what it is. Let's click here. So this guy's parent, what is his scale? His scale is 4.5. Okay. I'm wondering if minus 0.032 times 4.5 equals 0.144. It's kind of close. It's kind of close. I have a feeling that's what it is, though. So, yeah, I, I have a feeling that's what's happening here. Uh, and then let's just check real quick. 0.179 times 4.5, that's 0 0.8055. We get 0 0.982 here. It's pretty close. I should have reset that to zero. We'll do that in a minute. So what's happening though? I think what's happening is this delta and the global position, right? That's in global units, right? So we have a uh, X goes from like 0 0.3 to 0 0.5 in global units. That's global. We'll do a G for global. In local units, though, we're going from 0, 0.0 to like 0 0.1, right? About four times smaller, we'll say. Yeah, four times smaller. So that would be, let's make this easy on ourselves. So if we go from seven, right? So this is a change in about 0.4, which would result to a four times smaller change in about 0.1. And right now we're adding this delta to our local position, which is wrong because first we need to transform that into local space. And so how do we transform into local space? I think I can just 
C project this using like our transformation, right? So I might be wrong on this, but no, not on project. Uh, we want to take the inverse. So if we do, uh, let's do this. Transform inverse equals that. Okay. So we're going to take the inverse transform and we're going to do uh, vec3, well, I guess we'll say glm vec4 local delta equals that. Okay. I think we want to initialize that to one. Then we'll do that times equals transform inverse. And let's see what the local delta is. Well, actually, we should print both of them. So let's do that. And then we'll go and copy that. And we'll just say that. And we'll just make sure they're all aligned. OK, so we'll do that. And then we're not actually going to add anything. So we're just going to see what this stuff prints out real quick. And I think this is what we want if we get it right. So this isn't happy. Cannot convert from U to GLM VEC4. Let's go here because this is usually better output. So line 884 doesn't like this. So let's do that times local delta. I might just be doing that multiplication order wrong. OK, cool. So we've got that. Let's <laughs> grab our bookshelf. Put them back at zero. Okay, so we've got this. I'm gonna kind of drag it up there so we can see what we're getting here. Okay. So we get 0 0.1 is our delta. And then our local delta is <laughs> minus 1.9. So I think we're going the opposite direction there. I think that should be smaller. I think it should, but I could be wrong. Let's see. Wait, okay. Delta 2.076. Yeah, it's interesting because that doesn't really grow the same rate. Uh, let's see what happens. We'll try it out. <laughs> so we'll say this position start plus equals vec3. Okay, we might actually have to just, I'm not sure which way we would do this. Let's see what happens. Yeah, so that's not right either. <laughs> I think we're getting closer though. We're getting somewhere, right? Hopefully. <clears throat> so basically, okay, this is the delta in global space. We take the inverse transform. I think this is just backwards. I want to say that you have to do it that way because we're going backwards, kind of. Like order of multiplication does matter here, but I, okay, yeah, so that's definitely doing something different. I wonder if that was all it was. Okay, so clearly not because that still didn't work right. Uh, we're getting. Delta, well, local delta is smaller, so that's good. We scroll up here. Okay, so the local delta is definitely smaller now, which is good. Just not correct. So 
why is it still not correct is the question. So we do that, okay, then what do we do? We go into here, we basically say we get the parent, so we get the root of this object, then we reset all state, and what does this do? This basically just says that equals that, that equals that, okay, and then we go apply global transforms. And so that goes through. This might be the problem because we might need to do this to both of them. To uh, position start and position is what I'm wondering. So we're applying this local delta to that. But we're not applying it to the actual position itself. Um, well, no, that shouldn't matter, I don't think. Huh. Let's just do this and see if this helps out at all. I don't think it's going to, but we'll we'll see. Because I noticed both of those were being updated. So if we set both of these, is it going to reset it to a good state? I have no idea. No, apparently not. Okay, I should draw this out because this is getting us nowhere. So I'm going to switch screens here, and we're going to go over to here. And we're not learning Vulkan today, unfortunately. So, basically what we have, right, is we have the parent transform, which I'll draw in blue. Okay, so this is the parent transform. Um, let's say this scales by 4.5. Well, let's make this easier. This scales 2 by 2. The scale position equals... Uh, one comma one, right? Let's say this moves, we get a delta. Uh, same scale, two by two. Now position, oh, actually no, this isn't, we don't wanna do this yet. So this is the parent transform. Let's do a child transform now, which is positioned relative to this. Okay, so we have a child here. His local position, which I'll just do with an L, let's say is 1, 1, and his scale is 1, 1. What that means is if we were to go from his position, which is 1, 1, then we would add this scale times this local position to get the appropriate. So his global position would end up being 3, 3, which I think that's right, and I hope that makes sense. So now let's say we move this guy globally. Okay, we have a global delta, his new position equals four, three. So we have a delta global of one, zero. And we wanna figure out what is our new local position now. Intuitively, what is it? So we're at four, our parent is at one. So we know our local position is like one and a half, right? Because one and a half times two is three. And then we have the same y position, so we'll do that. So how do we get one and a half from a delta of one? So what did I do in my head is I guess what I should be saying. What I did in my head was I said, okay, this is our new global position. And then I looked at our parents' global position plus transform. No. Let's think about this a bit more. Wait, so what did I do there? I said, I know in order to get to one and a half, I have to do that times the scale. And that's our global translation, right? So that's our translation. Or 
or no, what I said was we need two times some number, I'll call y, to give us four, which is our new global position. That's the scale. So I said the scale of x times some number to get our new global position x. And what is this doing? This is basically saying we need to figure out our parents transform times some number, which gives us our new global position. Okay, so more generally, what is this saying? This means that if we wanted to get this, this is our local, that would be equal to the inverse of our parents transform. Uh, and we actually want to do it this way. The new transform times the inverse of our parents transform. I think that's it. Let's try that out. Let's see what happens. No idea if that's going to work or not, but we'll find out, I guess. So in code, what does that look like? Uh, in code, basically what we'll say that looks like is our parents transform. GLM mat4 parents transform equals, and we'll initialize this to one. Okay, right? And then we'll say if uh, not is null this parent. Okay, so if we do have a parent, then we say uh, anim object star parent can actually do that as a const equals animation manager get animation manager get object am and we want to do this parent id okay and parent should be defined here but i'm going to add this check anyways i need to figure out a better way to do this so anyways we say parent Transform, okay. And we want to do that guy. So then we'll say is parents transform equals that. All right, so then we're gonna say GLM map four inverse parent transform equals inverse of our parents transform. And then we basically just want to multiply that by our new global position. So instead of doing this, well, okay, I'll keep it this way for now. So we basically just want to say, uh, what is this? Our, we want to multiply that times our global. Okay, so we want to say vec4, uh, new global position. Okay, I think that's right, yeah. Which equals vec4, this. Okay, so we'll do that. Okay, and why is this not happy? Ah, because I'm using the wrong variable there. Okay, so we'll do that. And then we can say new local equals new global times inverse parent. Okay. So then this will just be our new local. And that should be that. Let's see if this works. I have no idea what's gonna happen here either. <laughs> but if I was doing that math right, then it should work, hopefully. No, I was not doing the math right. Interesting. Let's go into debug mode and let's put a breakpoint in here so we can inspect these things without me having to print all this stuff out and just debug. 
should hopefully make it a little bit easier. <clears throat> I thought this part of the stream was going to be the easy part, man. <laughs> but it's probably going to be the next part, which is just rendering textures, if we get to that. Hopefully we will. But it's never as easy as you think it's going to be, too, which is unfortunate. Okay. While well, we wait for that to compile. Interesting. We lost our camera. Where is my camera? <laughs> Have no idea. No errors logged. Weird. Okay. So let's do that. We're going to hit a breakpoint. So what is our delta, first of all? So our delta is minus 0 0.08 and minus or positive 0 0.5. Okay. And then what is our parents transform? Parents transform, which this is sometimes helpful to look at, is just 1, 1, 1. That doesn't sound right. Oh, because we set it to 1, 1, 1. <laughs> yeah, that does sound right. So we get the parent. We set it to the parent's actual transform. Okay, so this does look correct, right? So we're scaling by 4.5, which is what we see up here. And then we see the position down here. Uh, it's just kind of like how it gets embedded in the matrix itself. And if we look in here, yeah, that's 4.500. This is 0, 4.50. This is zero, zero, 001, and then this is the position. Yes, okay. So we've got that guy. If we skip over this, this is the inverse, or at least it should be. And the new global position, which is where we are now. Okay, right? That's just like the delta plus our old position. And then we say new local equals that times the inverse transform. So what we get for our new local is 1.9, 0 0.69. What was our local originally? It was 0, 0, 0. So that definitely sounds wrong. Whoops. That's not what I meant to do. I wonder if it's just the order of multiplication here, because I think GLM is backwards. So if we do that times that, is that correct? Who knows? Let's see. And how's it going, Frag Out Boom? I'm glad to see you're hyped about this. That's good. <laughs> okay, let's see. Okay, let's go jump through there. Okay, that looks right. I don't know if it is, but it definitely looks right. Okay. It went down. And it's just floating away. <laughs> That's not right. Hmm. <laughs> okay, that's interesting. That's not right, but what is happening? I have no clue. <laughs> so, <laughs> narrator, it was not right. No, it definitely is not right. Um, Yeah, I'm not sure what it's trying to do here. I'm also wondering why our camera has just disappeared. Like, it's just gone. <laughs> and I have no idea where that one either. Uh, 9, 4.5. Yeah, it's, it's nowhere to be found. Don't see it. It looks like our y-axis is inverted, though. No, our y-axis is not inverted. It's just not doing anything. Huh. Well, it isn't sure what it's doing either. It just follows your instructions. That is true. So my instructions are just wrong. Uh, so we got the inverse of our parents' transform.
Hmm. So this translate gizmo, how does this work again? So this basically says we do that. We do that. Okay, so then we do camera reverse project. basically get the new position. I know that's correct, right? Okay. So when there is no parent, this should be working correctly, I think. Let's check that real quickly because before it was. So if we click the parent, which is the bookshelf, ah, I don't see the gizmo at all. What if we click the text? Yeah, I don't see the gizmo at all here either. Huh. So that's something we got to fix. Why am I not seeing the gizmo there? Let's just put a breakpoint here, I guess. So if I click here, what is the global position start? Ah, that's garbage. That's why. Why is this garbage, though? That's what I have no idea about. Oh, maybe that's why we were getting garbage values before, too, because this is just wrong for some reason. So let's jump into here and see if this is getting set up properly. So this... looks correct zero 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 and we're getting 4.5 up here which means we're getting the correct scale in the correct position okay so that seems to be fine uh where's my find results here we go Yeah, so that seems to be fine. Uh, was that the one that I was looking at too? That was broken. Let's just double check that again. Yeah, it was this one. That's just garbage for some reason. If we go back into here and we click that, that is garbage. Why are you garbage? What if we run this one more time? Still garbage. This is coming through from here. Okay, so the global positions are messed up. But this is not. And neither is this. These both look right, but these both look wrong. That's really weird. Hmm. Let's do this again. So we go into here. This is garbage. We've come from here. Okay, so we update the object state. That's still no good, which I guess makes sense. Okay, then we go through all of its animations. That's fine. Uh, I don't care about that. Hmm. Why is that not set up properly, though, is the question. Uh, let's go to reset object state or reset state or maybe just reset. Reset all state. Okay, let's go in here. Uh, 
Okay, so that's <laughs> definitely garbage. I can see how that would be wrong. Position start is fine, rotation start's fine. Oh, you know what it is? I think if we go find that. I think it's a deserialization thing that I didn't think about. Which would be somewhere down here. Okay, so it's this is where we deserialize, right? Yeah. What do we set the global position to? I don't think we set it to anything here, which is interesting. Oh, no. Okay, here we go. We have position set to position start. Yeah, but we never actually set up the global positions. Uh, that's probably wrong. So let's set that to... And we'll set that to that. Okay, let's see if that fixes. Okay, so now that has a well-defined value. That's good at least. Oh, our camera's back too, so that's also good. Okay, that looks correct. Okay. So it's moving weird. What if we move the parent? Okay, parent's also moving weird. So we know we definitely have something wrong because the parent should move normally. Oh wait, actually, that's zero, zero. Okay, what about this one? Why is that over here? <laughs> that should be zero, zero. Let's go put a breakpoint here. Yeah, that's just wrong. Okay, I wonder why that's wrong now. <laughs> There's just too much stuff in this. I never, time to reverse the multiplication again. <laughs> yeah, I think honestly, that's probably the best thing to do here. Honestly, that does, that sounds like a pretty good idea. Let's see what happens when we do that. Uh, Do that again, see what happens. Oh, this is plus equals too. That should just be equals. That's why it keeps moving weird. Okay, well that's one problem. That looked like it was moving more correctly at least. Okay, and it's weird that it gets reset over there, but that should be equals, not plus equals. So problem one there. Okay, that's a start. Okay, you know, that's not right, but that's not bad. <laughs> so, uh, thanks for the help. That was a good suggestion. So I wonder why this is snapping like that. At least it's staying at the same position relative. Okay, and that's nice too. So now we get kind of like it actually tracks the mouse and stuff. Huh. If we go with the text here too, that's all fine. If we click one of the letters themselves, that's fine as, well, it was fine until it disappeared. <laughs> I don't know what I did to it. Uh, where did it go? Oh, it went up there somehow. Interesting, <laughs> okay, so it jumped up there somehow. Yeah, okay, so there's a weird offset being applied to them now. Um, hmm. I think... I want to say it's probably because of this stuff too, right? So this uses position. This uses position start. Okay, so we do that first. Then in update global transform, what do we do next? So that uses the position and the position start. Then we say 
this global transform equals that times that. Then we say this equals that times that. Oh, I wonder if I'm ever resetting these. Wait, yeah, I think I am inside of here. OK, yeah, yeah, this is completely reset because we're just using whatever rotation scale position we've got there. So that's completely reset. Then we multiply down. Then we decompose the transformation. into this position, which we then assign to our global position. And we do the same thing for the start, which we use that. Uh, and let's just double check that again and make sure I don't have a dumb copy paste error. Start, 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 start. OK, so that all looks right. And let's go to reset all state. OK, let's go into here. So we say that equals that. I'm wondering if we should even just do this. Let's do that. Let's just see what happens. I think that might be a problem, but yeah. Letter positioning, the hardest problem in computing. Yes, that is no joke. <laughs> I always have to redo it like five times before I finally get it right, but then one of the times it works. Okay, so that's there. Yeah, why is this getting reset to such a weird position though? It's so weird. And then we get kind of offset from here, but that kind of makes sense, right? If I move him locally far away, yeah, it's gonna move it far away from that, but I don't get why it adjusts our trans, whoops, adjusts our transformation like that. Uh, so that has to be a problem over here, doesn't it? In our on gizmo function somewhere. So we translate that. I'm not using this delta, so let's get rid of that. Okay, so then we get the parents transform. We set it to one where the identity first. We check if the parents not null. If it's not, we get the parents actual transformation. Then we take the inverse. Then we get this. Get rid of that too. And then we set this to the new local, and this is just set to the new global. Huh. I'm going to reverse them one more time. Let's see what happens. Maybe that plus sign was doing something too. Who knows? I'd say it's probably like 8 out of 10 difficulty, but there are harder problems. Uh, there's always harder problems, yes. Wait, is that right? Okay. Okay, look at that. So I think we just, uh, you know, if you just keep swapping the order of multiplication enough times, it'll eventually work is what we've learned here. <laughs> so cool. Okay, I'm glad that's finally working, right? Uh, took a little bit too long. If we just go, we can fix this text too by just doing that and it'll relay out everything. No, great lesson, yes. <laughs> Cool, okay, so I'm glad that's finally working. Uh, I can't even remember, what was the point of everything we were doing? The point of everything was we wanted to have better hotkeys for moving stuff. And we've just devolved into fixing this dumb bug. So let's go ahead and commit this information so we don't lose the changes. Schrodinger's USB, I guess so. <laughs> so we'll go, we'll add this stuff. Uh, Fix dumb bug. Sounds good enough to me. And then we'll go ahead and push this. All right. So 
what were we actually supposed to be doing? We were actually supposed to be adding more hotkey support, preferably having some blender style hotkeys for moving objects. All right, so that's basically what I wanted to do, uh, which we unfortunately did not do. So we have to do render and handle 2D gizmo logic based on edit mode. So what I'm thinking is, uh, for now, we'll kind of hack it into here, and then we'll have some sort of more formalized support for all this stuff eventually. And Reddit JPEG. I'll have to click on that later. So not on stream, just in case. I trust you, Joe Mega, but just in case. <laughs> so let's go ahead. We're going to embed some logic in here just to kind of start stuff off easy, right? Let's do this first of all. So bool, I guess, uh, is in move mode equals false, right? We're gonna say this. It's about USB having three states. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, I see what you're saying. Yeah, you flip it enough times. I get, yep. <laughs> okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna say in move mode is no, and then if, uh, I think I have input, but I don't have it included in here. So let's go ahead and add that. Uh, hash include core slash input. And I'll go ahead and put that up here. Okay, so we'll say if input key begin press, we have key pressed, key down, and key up. I think key pressed is the one we want. And we're gonna say jillfw key g, which is the hotkey in Blender for moving. We're gonna say is in move mode, equals not is in move mode. Let's just also make sure this is working right. Uh, move mode. This should only trigger once every time I hit the key. I just want to make sure that function's correct. So, oh, you're a this pointer kind of guy. <laughs> Don't share a meme unless it's passed through JPEG compression at least five times. That's also true. Okay, so if I click on an object and press G and G, we should only, Okay, cool. So it's only triggering once. Um, I want to know when it's triggering though. So if I just pull this over here. Okay, so if we click there. Okay, so it triggers when I release the key, which I think that's probably fine. It feels okay. Cool, so we've got this thing. We can now tell if we're in move mode, right? So if we're in move mode, I basically just want to track the mouse. Yeah, I think that's right. Uh, which is basically what this whole thing was doing. Um, hmm. Trying to think of what the best way to do this is going to be. I guess for now, we'll just do a global position start. So we'll do this or is in move mode, right? And then we can do something in here. We can say if is in move mode. Actually, we'll do this. Okay, so basically if we're in move mode, that overrides clicking on the gizmos and stuff. Clicking on the gizmo shouldn't actually do anything. Uh, I think what we want to do is basically just unproject the mouse position. So if we get input mouse pose, uh, which is just mouse X and mouse Y, right? So I'm doing this backwards, but we'll do that. Vec2 mouse pose equals that. Okay, and then we basically just want to unproject, which I have an example of in here, right there. Okay, so that's what we want to do, which gives us a new position. So you say global position start equals that. Reverse project, and we want to just take the mouse position. Okay. And that's going to give us a VEC2. And we need that to be a VEC3, so we'll just do uh, unprojected mouse pose equals that. Uh, that's actually a VEC2. And then we can say global position start.x equals that start.y equals unprojected.y. 
Okay, so that should just track the mouse is basically what I want to happen when we're in move mode. Um, if you've used Blender, same thing. Let's see if that works. I press G. It's definitely tracking something, uh, just not what I want it to track. So let's go ahead and move this guy back over to here. So what were we unprojecting? What was happening there? It's essentially what we were doing in here, right? So this goes down. Oh, mouse to normalize. View. Okay, I should probably just use this thing uh, and just do exactly what I was doing in there. Uh, probably makes a little bit more sense, doesn't it? So we'll do this equals that. And I need to import that now. So let's go all the way up to here, the top. Hash include editor slash editor GUI. Okay, so we get the normalized mouse viewports coordinates, and then we unproject those. And then we just set the object position to that. And that should kind of, and then all that logic should take over and do the same thing we had happening before. So we don't have to redo it, which is nice. Awesome, look at that. And the gizmo even disappears too, which is what I kind of wanted. So now it's tracking my mouse until I press G again. If I press G, we kind of pick up the object and move it. Cool, this is already feeling like way nicer. So now the next thing we want to do is, you know how in Blender, when you press G and then you press X, you can move it and it just tracks you horizontally. It's the next thing. And then we want to do the same thing for G and then Y. So we've got move mode. And then we want to say is in horizontal move mode only equals, well, I guess is in horizontal move mode. It's false. Uh, static bool is in vertical move mode equals false, right? So if we're in move mode and if you press uh, GLFW key X, right? That should start moving you horizontally. So we'll do that. Uh, otherwise, if you press key Y, we should be in vertical move mode. And one last thing we wanna do is we're gonna have to kind of keep track of our very starting position, right? Because depending on all this stuff, we might want to change that starting position. So let's also have this uh, static vec3 position when start move mode equals vec3. We'll do not a number. And then what we'll do here is we will just say that equals this guy. Okay, so we'll kind of keep track of that. Okay, so we've got that. Yeah, I think that's what we want to do. So we got that. We can move between these two. Um, and then if we press if is in move mode and you press uh, escape, which I don't get why I'm repeating this. If input key pressed, GLFW key escape. We just want to turn everything off. Is in move mode equals false. In horizontal equals false. Is in vertical equals false. And we also want to make sure if you do switch these guys, it turns the other one off, right? This I should really be representing all this with a enum because that's what this is. This is a state now. This is just the flags make it more confusing. We'll do that eventually. Uh, for now, though, let's just kind of hack it in here. So if we're in move mode, first thing I'm going to do is say bool reset global position equals false, right? Uh, this may be true. Wait, yeah, this, this might be true. If we switch here, we're gonna say true. Okay, we're gonna do that. If we press X, that's true. So we have the position from when we first started entering move mode. Okay, and then we also, if we press escape, we wanna cancel. So that's also a time we would reset our global position. Okay, so now, if reset global position, then we want to say reset global position equals false, first of all. And then global position start 
equals global position when move mode started, whatever I called that. Yeah, when start move. Okay, so we'll reset that. Then we go into is in move mode. Uh, if is in vertical move mode, we do one thing. Else if in horizontal, we do another. Otherwise, we do what we were doing before. And we could probably simplify this logic because I'm about to just go ahead and say, copy that. There, vertical, we only move Y. Horizontal, we only move X. So now, let's just see if this works, I guess. <laughs> okay, so we click it. I press G, I press X. All right, we're locked on to the X position. I press Y. We're locked on vertically. I press escape. It cancels our move, except it doesn't. <laughs> okay, it, it almost cancels our move. We're close. Uh, let's do one last thing. So this, uh, we should have one more thing. Bool uh, reset OBJ. Well, okay, yeah. So if we reset the global position, That happens here. What we can do is we can just say this global position start equals that. Okay. And that should fix the thing that was happening before too. Well, okay, see, then we have this thing too and we kind of want that to trigger. So I'm gonna add one more state and we're gonna fix all this later, I promise. But for now, we're just, we're hacking it in here. So we'll have bool canceled move mode equals false. And then if we do this, we want to say canceled that equals true. Whoops, not that. Not that. Okay, canceled move mode equals true. Okay, so if we cancel our move mode, we're going to reset the global position. Then we're going to skip this stuff. So it's not going to lock onto the cursor. But then we're going to say if we hit this, uh, whatever we call that, reset, cancel, or canceled move mode. So then it's going to go into here. It's going to do all this stuff. Global position is going to be reset to whatever it was at the beginning, and then it's going to update everything. Let's see if this works. Hopefully. Dark Rogue, good to see you. Happy weekend. Hopefully you're doing all right. Uh, we're fixing gizmos right now. Awesome, okay, that's the behavior I wanted. So we press G, we start picking up the object, we move it wherever, we press escape, it cancels it. We click, it doesn't cancel it. <laughs> so if we click, we want that to stop moving it too. So right here, if input mouse pressed, mouse down, Jill F W key, I mean, Jill F W mouse. No, I have mouse button. This is weird. Okay, I don't know why I have mouse button there. Anyways, if the mouse is down, is and move mode equals false. That equals false. That equals false. Cancel equals false. So we just reset all the state. So that should hopefully like put the object down, which is what I also want. So we can now pick it up hopefully by pressing G. We put it down by left clicking. If we press G and then X, we lock on the, ver the horizontal. If we press Y, we switch to vertical. So we can switch between them. Um, if we press Y again, that should cancel it because I think that's what Blenders does, right? And then if we press G again, ah, okay. so. Another thing we got to fix is if we cancel by pressing G, it should reset all the state. So if not is in move mode, we should cancel everything. Uh, basically just do all this except for the canceled one. That equals false. That also equals false, okay. 
reset state. So this re this should really be set with a uh, state machine or something because that's what this is and this is not good at all. Anyways though, it's kind of hacked in there and it's working, which is good. So if you press G again, that's gonna cancel everything. And if you press Y, I think what we actually want this to do is we want this to say uh, not and that should do the correct behavior. And then same thing here, except is in horizontal. Okay, so, and I think that should be the last little bit and we should just kind of have it all work. Let's try it one more time. So we pick up our object, G. I press X, we start moving X. If I press X again, we cancel the X horizontal. If I press Y, we're in vertical. If I press it again, we cancel that. If I press G, we cancel the move. If I press G again, if I press escape, that actually cancels it and it resets to the original position. That's pretty cool. I'm happy with that. And then we should also do, if you press dot while having it selected, it should reset it like the, the numpad dot should reset it to its parents position. So that's another thing that Blender does, which is really nice. Uh, but yeah, if we do this, we can kind of pick it up, move it around. Say we want to get it perfect, and then we want to get it like perfect there. You know, you can just kind of do that now, and it works, which is nice. Also, unintended side, side effect is the gizmo disappears when you enter move mode. I didn't mean for that to happen, but because uh, of the way I coded this horribly, it just does that, which is nice. We can also go in here, and it should still... Yeah, okay, so we can also do it this way, which is really nice. So you can like go into your final view, make sure it's all lined up properly. And it just kind of works. Cool. I think that's pretty good. So the code is super ugly. I will be fixing it, I promise. Just not live on stream, because that's, I think, a little bit more boring, right? So let's go ahead and commit these changes. And we'll call it... Uh, status get um, hacked in blender style hotkeys working for move gizmo and I'm just now think of this I don't know why I didn't think of this before this code should all live in the move gizmo itself. Like the move gizmo should be in charge of all this, not all the hacky stuff I was doing, right? We should have it inside this translate gizmo function. Um, so yeah, I'll have to fix that and stuff, but that should be fairly easy to do. The one thing that's not fairly easy is you can have multiple translate gizmos at once. So how do you figure out which one? Don't know, but that's a problem for future me. So yeah. Let's go back to release and we'll just kind of review everything we've done. Uh, Joe Mega, also remember the reason to which I like Rust over C++. All string literals are UTF-8. Yeah, that's pretty nice. Uh, string encodings are annoying. Very annoying. So just a review of what's happened. I've added in some layouts. That was kind of off stream stuff that, we've, that I did. So we can switch like Default layout, right? It just kind of changes the view. If I go to debug, yet again, different view. If I go to default two, that's kind of the one I was using. You can also go ahead and save layouts. So if you go file, save editor layout, you can save a custom one. But if I type in something like default, that's a reserved name, or it should be a reserved name, but it let me save it. So that's not good. I'm gonna have to see why it did that. Uh, yeah, oh man, it overwrote the file and everything. That's annoying, now I'm gonna have to go fix that. And this is broken now too, interesting. Okay, so all sorts of interesting things that I'm learning now. Uh, okay, well anyways, that was one thing that was added that's not completely working right. But we did add gizmos too. So now we can go and we can move this stuff around. We can also click the object and it moves correctly relative to the parent, which is nice. And one last thing I did, which was also off stream, is I added in collapsible properties over here. So everything is grouped a little bit nicer. Still looks ugly, but that's something I can fix later too. 
but yeah, overall, I think this is uh, turning out pretty good. I have no idea what this is. This just says edit and then C-E-N-E. -E. I imagine I, I meant to put something there eventually. It's just not there. Cool. Well, I think that's it for this stream. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. I'll add textures and clean up this code off stream, but I'll see you guys next week if you're there. Thanks, everybody.